first cup of tea, you are a stranger. With the second, a friend. But with the third, you are family. I did the book Three Cups of Tea by Greg Mortensen and David Rellin. Now, for children our age, most of them, when they grow up, want to be a celebrity or a scientist or a vet or something like that. But kids in Pakistan and in India and other Middle Eastern countries that are less fortunate have much different ideas. About 99% of them want only one thing that only costs about $20,000, and that is to go to school. Before I get into the school, let me start from the top. I'm Greg Mortensen. I was born in 1958 in Minnesota. When I was three months old, my family, which was just my parents and I then, went to Tanzania so they could work at an all-girls school for teachers. I had a few sisters, in particular Krista. Krista was very sick. She had meningitis and she had many disabilities, including taking her one hour every morning to get dressed. When I was 11 years old, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest mountain. When I was 14, I moved back to the US. School was hard and I'd never been to America except when I was three months old, so it was all new to me. I joined the Army for two years. When I was 34, I fell 800 vertical feet while climbing a mountain. I broke my arm and my shoulder got pulled out of its joint. I called my mom in the hospital and she told me some horrible news. Krista had died. I wanted to do something for her, honorary, and that was worthy of her great life. So I joined a group to climb K2, the second highest mountain in the world. I planned to place this necklace on top of K2, her favorite amber necklace in her honor. Sadly, I failed, something I wasn't used to and I definitely didn't like. I was 600 feet from the summit when I got lost. I almost died twice from starvation and from being with no one and almost freezing. But I survived and I ended up in Korfi, a very small village in Pakistan. At first, people were scared of me. They'd never really seen a white person. But slowly, a relationship built between us, and I stayed in the chief's house. When I saw little kids sitting on the ground, writing multiplication st tables with sticks, my heart was broken. I put my hand on the chief's shoulder and said, I will build a school, I promise. This was the turning point in my life because I knew my life would change from now on. I came back to the USA and I wrote 580 letters to many famous people, including Oprah and Michael Jordan. Only one responded by a phone call. His name was John Hornet, and he called, he was very rich, and said, that's all? You can really build a school for 12 grand? I said yes, and a week later, later I received this check from him for $12,000 <laughs> and a note with three words, don't mess up. I went back to Corfi and was so excited to build a school. Sadly, the chief told me that we couldn't build a school. And I said, why, why, why not? I've raised all this money, I'm so excited. And he said, we need a bridge first. Because in Corfi, there's a river you have to cross and a basket on a steel cable to get there. And we couldn't transport supplies that way. So we built the bridge and I came back to the US and asked John for another 10 grand to build the school. He agreed and then we, set out stakes for the school. I came back again after setting out the stakes and sold everything I owned. My car, my apartment, I even got rid of my girlfriend. But a few days later, I met Tara Bishop at a party. We fell in love at first sight and we married six days later. We didn't tell our parents and friends that we married until after. So our wedding was very small and our reception was just an Italian restaurant down the street. I had to go back to Pakistan, but I really didn't want to leave Tara, my newlywed. So I went to the airport and postponed my tickets for a week later. The next week, I went back again, and I did this again seven more times because I really didn't want to leave her. I finally had to go back, and we began work on the school. It was hard, and the conditions were tough, but finally, our school was built. My dream came true. After that, I realized I needed to do more. So I started the CAI, Central Asia Institute. After that, we built three more schools in just three months. It was very dangerous for me to keep traveling and not easy. In fact, I was once kidnapped but released before I was injured or killed. Doing this changed my life and the world forever. I realized that just so little can change so much. I had a daughter, Amira, and a son, Kyber. We still live in Montana today. The last time Amira and Kyber went to Pakistan was in 2008. It's really hard for them to go there because it's so dangerous. It's 
also not easy for them with me being away most of the year. But they do fine. This book means a lot to me, especially because our school is building a school also. It really changed my life, and now I hope I can do something like that. Before I leave, and leave you with the mystery of why this book is called Three Cups of Tea, let me explain more. With the first cup of tea, when I first went there, I shared a tea with the family, and I, they said I was a stranger. The next time I came back, I had a second cup of tea, and I was a friend, and I even stayed at their house at night. And the third time I went back, and for the rest of my life, I am family, and they will do anything, even die for me, they say. This is a picture of the first school I built in Pakistan, in Corfi. When I first had Amira, when we first had Amira, we took her to Pakistan when she was only eight weeks old. Everyone in the village wanted to hold her because they'd never seen a little white baby. Thank you. <laughs>